Hello and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today we are going to be talking about Splitly Philodendron, botanically known as Monstera Deliciosa. And this is one of my favorite plants this is a adolescent um, um, a monstera uh, you can see some splitting in the leaves here and as the plant gets bigger it will will put out more leaves that have more splitting in them to show you a picture here of a more um, mature plant you can see how many uh, split leaves happen after it gets a little bit more mature as well so it's a gorgeous plant. It's actually one of my favorite plants, uh, as mentioned. It um, <laughs> reminds me, especially when you have a lot of the split leaves, of um, snowflakes that you made in elementary school by folding the paper and cutting. So it's, every time I see the, that, I, I, I often think of that. That it um, is also called Swiss cheese plant because of all the, the holes as well. So today we're going to talk about plant care for this plant and how to keep this plant healthy and happy for you in your indoor garden. I do have another video on its background, uh, plant stories on its background and, and a little bit more about where it comes from. Right now I'm going to talk to you about how to keep it nice and healthy and happy. It is um, uh, from um, some very tropical areas, Central America, the jungles of Central America. So it does require some humidity to do really well. So that is something to keep in mind. One of the things to keep in mind, if you can put it over a humidity tray, I have videos on that. So a humidity tray where you put marbles, pebbles in the dish, and then you put some water just below the marbles and pebbles, that will give the plant a little more humidity. You can also uh, put them amongst other plants. Plants will humidify each other, so that's another really good way to keep this plant humidified. So if you're having crispy outer leaves with the plant, that can be an indication that you need to up the humidity a little bit. So that is a good thing to do. The lighting. So they like a medium bright light, medium to bright light, but out of direct sun. If you do put this plant into, into direct sun, you can risk getting sunburn on the plants. Uh, on these plants, I have a video on sunburn and what to do if you have sunburned a plant, but your best bet is to keep the plant a few feet away from a really bright window, and a bright window would mean a western exposure and a southern exposure, which is the southern exposure windows are going to be a little bit different depending on the time of year. So at certain times of the year, the southern exposure window is going to be a lot more bright than others, so best to just keep them a couple feet, two, three feet away from that window overall if you have them near that wind that type of window so that you don't burn the leaves eastern exposure window they absolutely love it's the nice morning sun that bathes them in a beautiful bright light so they will thrive in that such window if you do have them in a northern exposure window you do want to provide them with some extra full spectrum lighting full spectrum light bulbs come in many different forms and you can put them in just about any fixture so do give them extra lighting if that is the case and you have a, a dimmer conditions and nor if you have mostly northern windows or not very few windows you're going to have dimmer conditions so that is uh, something you want to keep in mind good lighting for them the uh, monstera deliciosa and by the way monstera means giant that would uh, these leaves can get very big and deliciosa refers to uh, the delicious and the reason it is uh, that because it, uh, it will fruit it rarely fruits indoors but sometimes it, it will I do have a video of one that I did have fruit indoors and it tastes delicious however the fruit actually takes more than a year to about a year to um, to ripen so you have to be very patient if you do get the fruit you're not gonna be eating it 
anytime soon. So the, uh, it uh, does in its native habitat, it will uh, grow up into the, the trees and the jungle. So you can trellis this guy when it gets bigger and, ha and train the leaves up into the trellis. It will also nicely drape over a large pot for you. You, a lot of times, will have to stake it some because the leaves will hang and they can get heavy and you don't want the stem at that point to break off. So I would stake just to, to assure that that doesn't happen when they get, when the plant gets larger. It does have uh, um, these, uh, what are called a cord, they're cord-like aerial roots, they're aerial roots. They emerge from the base of the plant. This one doesn't really have any yet, but as the plant gets older, it will. And in its native habitat, it uses these roots to climb up into the trees and to absorb nutrients. So these aerial roots can be trained to climb up the support along with the leaves. Uh, a lot of times that's done on a moss pole or you can direct those aerial roots back into the soil where they will then root and create more leaves for you. So don't necessarily cut off all those aerial roots because those aerial roots do have a function. You can find moss poles at the nursery you can, or you can make your own by wrapping a pole with sphagnum moss. Uh, so around a wooden dowel is best because wood will also absorb moisture. Secure it in place with nylon thread or fishing line stick the pole in the center of the pot and then let the plant grab onto those air roots grab onto that uh, prior to doing that do soak the sphagnum moss really well the pole really well and before sticking it in and then you're going to need to keep that pole moist by misting it on a regular basis uh, and if it does get dry at some point, take it out. If you can take it out and try to soak it or soak it in some manner with a washcloth or something to get it to re-moisten it. Sphagnum moss will dry out, especially indoors and especially in a dry indoor, indoor climate. So good news about having that pole is it will also emit some moisture and give you more humidity to the plant and keep the plant really happy and healthy. And the misting, if you mist with a spray bottle, will also give it a little bit of a misting boost. Although the misting boosts are short-lived, I have a video on that, but there are many reasons to, to mist as well. So feeding this guy so and oh and and, and uh, actually stepping back a bit to watering so when the plant is very happy it will be a big drinker so you are going to want to keep an eye on the plant and you do want to water when the top inch or so has dried out if it's a smaller plant it could be even the half half inch this one about an inch down and I will will water at that point uh, so uh, always water with warm to tepid water as I mentioned in a video I have on that and as I often mention you don't want to shock the plant roots with cold water uh, especially a tropical like this because what will happen is it will shock the roots not only shock them but it can cause root dieback and that can cause root rot eventually because you won't have enough roots in the soil so warm water for these guys just like they would get in the rainforest if you can use demineralized, such as reverse osmosis or rainwater, that is actually best for these guys. That will help prevent tip burn and uh, crusty, uh, the browning crusty things look on the leaves as well. So if possible, use one of those two types of, of, um, of water. The Moisture meter is a really good tool for these guys, so you will want to water them when they're about in the four before they get to the three, which is dry. So around the four is a good a good rule of thumb for a lot of houseplants, actually. It's approaching, I like to say approaching dryness, so in a day or so it would be pretty dry. You don't want to wait for it till it's really dry because that stresses most plants out and it can cause plants to eventually fail. So approaching dryness in the four on the moisture meter great uh, point at which to water you can also pick up the plant if it's in a plastic pot if it's a lot, lot more lightweight than it was before go ahead and water I do have videos on when to water as well okay fertilizing so they are fairly heavy feeders as well 
remembering their cord-like roots, their aerial roots, those roots get big and they climb throughout the jungle and they soak up nutrients as they do that. So this plant is used to being fed. Probably not going to work for you just to rely on those aerial roots because you aren't probably not living in a jungle, although if you have a lot of houseplants, it feels like that, but probably not quite enough. So you will want to fertilize the plant about once a month. I would uh, stop in the cold winter months for about two months. So if it's really cold for you in December and January, do stop feeding at that point and resume again in late February and doing your last feeding in late November. It's, you can use a granular fertilizer. I do have one, I'll put the link below. You put it in um, with a wooden dowel to about two, about two inches deep and, uh, and then water it before and water it after fertilizing. You always wanna water before fertilizing, even with liquid fertilizer. You can also use a nice liquid fertilizer. I would recommend an organic fertilizer in general for uh, whether or not it is liquid or granular water it in really well so every once a month once every two months is fine i wouldn't go any longer than two months with this particular plant since um, you do want it to continue to grow and get really pretty and gorgeous and have really nice sheen on its leaves which is a sign that it's very happy you will want to repot this plant when it gets bigger into the correct size pot. Use an organic soil-based potting medium that will retain some moisture. So something with uh, peat moss or core in it to that will retain moisture because as mentioned, they are moisture lovers. And if you remember, they're growing, they're growing up into the trees. They, may, they don't have necessarily a lot of their roots in the soil at that point, but they are in, uh, surrounded by constant moisture in the jungle. So you do want to make sure that you do keep them moist, but as mentioned, not you don't want to overwater. So that the, usually, as mentioned, around the four on the moisture meter, it will be it will still be moist at that point. If you're finding that it's the four for you on your moisture meter is a little too dry, then you could go could water a little bit sooner, but you don't want to do too much sooner than that because they will succumb to root rot as all house plants will if their roots are kept too moist. When you do pot up, you want a two-thirds plant to one-third pot ratio, as I always talk about. You do not want to be putting into too big of a pot because you will uh, cause the plant to most likely go into root rot and can lose it that way. So the, um, as mentioned, humidity also important and pests aren't common on split leaf philodendrons, but do watch out for mealybugs, scale, and spider mites. Mealybugs are white cottony pests, scale are little bump-like pests. I have videos on both of those. Spider mites are, will create webbing on the plant and then they will also, so like a spider web, and then if you shake the leaf over a white piece of paper, it can, you will see little mites running around. Uh, most likely, if you have spider mites on your monstera, your monstera is too dry because spider mites like dry conditions, so they are less likely to be found on monstera than the mealybugs and scale, which do like it moist. So wash the plant leaves regularly with a soft, damp cloth that will help prevent um, unwanted diners on the leaves and keep them overall healthy. I have a video on cleaning them with some, um, some uh, soap as well. A nice, uh, you can clean with insecticidal soap, I would suggest, especially at, uh, in the fall months um, before winter hits to make sure you don't have any eggs or anything on the plant that could cause some problems during the, that time. But overall, throughout the year as well. A good cleaning uh, on a regular basis is good. Put them in the shower, rinse them off really well, just protect the uh, soil so it doesn't run down into the drain. So that is it on keeping Monstera deliciosa, aka Swiss cheese plant, split leaf philodendron, happy and healthy. 
Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.